everyone welcome back to the channel i hope everyone is doing well today so before starting our today's lesson which will be about this um, this new tutorial okay we are we are going to learn how to create a floating action button with an animated floating menu i just would like to uh, talk about quickly about my new uh, tutorial uh, available on my website farookacademycourses.com where you can watch this tutorial about card views okay and concerning today's lesson as I was saying before we are going to create this very nice floating action button okay with an animated floating menu we're going to launch Xcode okay and create a new Xcode project okay cool So we are going to create a new single view app uh, project okay so that's what you're going to select here okay then you're going to give it a name so i'm going to call it floating menu demo en okay just like that and then you can save the project on your mac okay we are going to add a new file in the project navigator here like that to our project and create a new Swift UI view okay here we call this floating menu okay flow menu just like that okay in this view we will implement the floating action button with its corresponding menu we will then use the finished menu inside our actual content view okay so for the floating button we insert a, a corresponding system icon into our floating menus body so here image okay just like that this one and then you can write plus circle dot fill okay and press on resume so we enlarge the image and give the icon a red color okay so here resizable okay then frame will be uh, 80 and 80 and 80 okay we don't need the alignment parameter okay and finally i can select foreground color and select red just like that okay cool so to give the icon a certain plasticity we would like to add a slight drop shadow to it to do this we use the shadow modifier okay here and create a slightly shifted gray shadow with a small radius okay so this one gray 0 0.2 here 1 and here 1 okay just like that cool so with a slight drop shadow we create some plasticity to our button okay finally we've wrapped the image into a button for now we use a dummy print statement as the buttons action okay so here button no button okay so here uh, print show a menu okay and then we can delete the label and here simply cut and paste this portion like that okay so each menu item consists of a circle containing a certain icon okay to stack these two elements on top of each other 
we use a Z stack inside the V stack, okay? Z, Z stack is like that, okay? With a circle, foreground color. Okay, uh, we're going to give it a red value. Okay, here the frame will be uh, 55 over 55. The image will be a bubble la fill. Okay. And here image scale will be large and foreground color will be white just like that okay the menu item itself should have a drop shadow as well so we reuse the shadow modifier for the z stack itself okay so here gray 0 0.2 1 and 1 Okay, so I have to put this button into a VStack. Okay, and then put this Z stack here into the, the VStack. Cool, so now it works. And now I can extract the Z stack into a subview. Okay, and call it a menu item. Okay, since each menu item should have a different icon, we add a property to the menu item structure that we use for the icon image. So here, var icon, three type of string, okay. We then initialize the icon from our floating menu. Bubble left fill. Okay. Then we add two more menu items with different icons. We push the whole menu down by using a spacer. Okay, so here we can copy paste it twice. Okay, the menu items should only be displayed if the user has tapped on the button. Thus, we create three, three different states in our floating menu view for the three according menu items. Okay, so here, okay, so here, states var show menu item one equal false okay and we can copy paste this line twice and simply change the number here okay so only if the states are true we want to display the menu items okay so we can write if show menu item one is true then uh, we display this one okay then if show menu item two then this one
Okay, we can now toggle the states from our action button. For this purpose, we create a function called show menu. Okay, so here, func show menu. Okay, just like that. Show menu item three dot toggle. Show menu item two dot toggle and show menu item one dot toggle. Okay, we can now call this function from our button. Okay, so here self dot show menu okay so execute the app in the preview simulator and click on the floating button our menu items show up normally okay cool so when we click on the button again our menu disappears again However, we want the different menu items to appear one after the other rather than at the same time. They should also move in from the right side of the screen. Okay, so to display the different menu items delayed, we have to toggle the corresponding states in our show menu function with the delay as well. Okay, so to execute code with the delay, we use the dispatch queue dot main dot async after method. Okay, so here dispatch queue dot main dot async after uh, this one. Okay. So now plus zero point one, okay, and then okay, yes, I forgot to write self okay cool and we can copy paste that once again and write here 0 0.2 and here 1 okay cool so if we now click on the action button The show menu one state will be toggled immediately after one tenth of a second. The show menu two, item two state, and after another tenth of a second, the show menu item three state gets toggled. Okay, so here cool. So now we want the menu items to move in from the right side. To animate the toggling of the menu items, we have to use the with animation statement within our show menu function. Okay, so here with animation show menu item three dot toggle like that okay now we can add a transition to our menu item view uh, here 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 trailing is like that okay So now we would like to add the floating menu to the bottom right of our content view. To make this possible, we first have to create a transparent view that covers the entire screen. For this purpose, we use a rectangle object. So here, it's like that. Okay, foreground color 
clear and then frame max width is infinity and max height is infinity as well okay cool so to stack the floating menu on top of this transparent rectangle we wrap the re rectangle into Z stack okay it's like that okay so to stack the floating menu on top of this transparent rectangle we wrap the rectangle into a z stack and use the bottom trailing alignment uh, option okay so here alignment bottom trailing now we can insert our floating menu we also apply some padding to it okay so here Floating menu, okay. Give it some padding, okay. So if we run the app in the regular simulator, we see our floating action button in the lower right corner, okay. The individual menu items move in from the right side of the screen. Hello. okay actually we missed something so here it's with animation okay and here as well Let me retry and see if it works better now. Okay, so we have to delete this line. Okay, normally we are good to go now. So as you can see, the design is very, very nice okay so that's all for today's guys i hope you enjoyed the lesson give it a thumbs up and see you in the next uh, tutorial and take care bye bye